This is In The Loop, I'm Christian Bryant. In the US, the debate has really picked up over what the police department's role should be in our communities. Calls to defund or redirect police budgets have been met with equally vocal calls to raise budgets and the size of police forces. We all agreed, as I've said uh, from the outset, that the answer is not to defund the police. The answer is to fund the police with the resources and training they need to protect our communities. But there's another factor in the conversation that often gets overlooked, and that's private policing. And it's a massive industry that's rising fast. Private policing can include anything from private security details for individuals to contractors hired by companies to protect property to mercenary groups that work with the US military and abroad. And increasingly, we're seeing local governments hiring private security too. And yeah, that's in addition to a public police force. For example, in June of 2020, in the wake of high profile police killings like George Floyd, the Minneapolis Board of Education canceled its security contracts with the police. But then, soon after, it posted ads looking for public safety support specialists. Cities like Portland, Detroit, Boston, Stockton, and Oakland have all hired private security forces to supplement their police departments. These forces are seemingly for nonviolent work, but sometimes the line isn't too clear. Private security workers are armed and sometimes have the same arresting powers as local police. Private police forces aren't new in the US. In fact, the country's earliest forms of local law enforcement began with private companies or small forces. Up until the Civil War, across a number of Southern states, slave patrols were hired by wealthy landowners to capture enslaved people who had escaped. And in Northern cities through much of the 1800s, companies like the Pinkerton National Detective Agency were sometimes hired to break up rallies or riots for their unionizing workers. The Pinkertons are still around, by the way, using highly skilled agents to protect their VIP clients. What is new today is the massive size and scope of the private security industry. And that's not limited to the US. More than 40 countries have more private workers hired to protect specific people, places, or things than police officers mandated to protect the public. That's at least half the world's population. And some of these ratios are pretty big. China has almost twice as many private security workers to police officers. South Africa has about two and a half times as many. And India has about five times as many. In the US, though the ratio is more equal, private police forces still outnumber the police, and they may be growing across the country. So let's take a closer look at what kind of impact private security forces are having on at least one community here. In Chicago, one security company has been hired to patrol one of the wealthier neighborhoods to deter crime. And while some residents are relieved for the extra protection, others still have some questions. National correspondent Ben Shimiso takes us to Chicago to tell us more. Gun in holster. Radio on and lights activated. It's the start of a routine shift for Jim Swatkowski. Just driving up and down the streets and uh, alleyways and whatnot and just making sure that there's nothing suspicious going on. Swatkowski is a full-time police officer in the Chicago suburbs. Today he's off duty, but patrolling a Chicago City neighborhood as a private guard. What we're trying to do is be uh, good paid observers. With violent crime rising in many cities, wealthy neighborhoods like this one on the north side of Chicago are hiring their own private police to keep residents safe. So when you patrol the streets, what exactly do you look out for? open garage doors, unattended packages, um, you know, and, and even, you know, bigger things. Like if someone, someone appear to be trying to break into a vehicle, you know, if they are, it's not my job to get involved, but it is my job to notice what the person looks like, get a description, call the police. Swatkowski cannot make arrests. He says his job is mainly to report and deter crime. To do so, he cruises around the same square mile all day inside Chicago's Bucktown neighborhood. Under what circumstances would you feel the need to intervene? If I saw someone right in front of me who was being attacked and it looked like there might be serious bodily harm. You legally carry a weapon and you would use it and you would do what it takes. Right, I mean, you know, and this goes with police work in general, right? But 
you know, it's it's always a last resort. The Bucktown Perimeter Swatkowski Patrols is one of five Chicago areas where off-duty police officers have recently been hired. In those areas, neighborhood groups are paying private company P4 Protective Services roughly $200,000 a year for an armed guard eight hours a day. In this area here is our uh, command center. From the company's headquarters, P4 executive Steve Vitale says remote officers work 24-7 as additional eyes and ears. Essentially what they'll do is have constant communication, not just with the citizens when they're posting on the Slack channel, but with our officers. On a Slack channel, P4 officers and residents communicate in real time. They can post on the Slack channel that they're going to be taking their dog for a walk in this block at this time. Could we provide a patrol during that time? Vitale points to early Chicago City data showing the area's P4 patrols receive less crime than neighborhoods next door. I think it it's, could be the future of policing in many metro cities. But many in Chicago, including the mayor, question the practice. We don't want to have a circumstance where public safety is only available to the wealthy. That's a terrible dynamic. The ACLU says it's unclear how private officers can be held accountable. The group also argues that private policing can lead to racial profiling. They are helping create sort of a gated community and monitoring who is coming in and out of a community. And such that such type of presence may discourage people from assembling, from visiting, from exploring the city that everyone in the Chicago is allowed to do. Okay. Vitale stresses that his officers are thoroughly vetted and trained and that no weapon has been discharged since the program started in late October. As for Chicago's Bucktown residents, they say the patrolling car is omnipresent. I would say every time I walk my dog, even just like in a block loop around here, I will see at least one car. They're, they're probably down each street every 20 minutes to 30 minutes. But opinions diverge on whether that's a good thing. With all the carjackings that we've had recently, it does feel good to know somebody's out there. I don't know who he is. I don't like the disco lights, and uh, I don't know that I feel safer. Safer or not, one feeling everyone shares, confusion. Are they just driving cars? Can they actually like stop crime if given the chance? I don't understand what they're doing. Confusion because no one seems to know who in the neighborhood hired P4. If people are interested in like community efforts to keep our neighborhood safe, then there needs to be like a lot more communication between everyone. A person familiar with the group of residents financing the project tells Newsy they wish to remain anonymous to avoid personal attacks. Bucktown is all clear. Back in the car with Swatkowski, the private agent says everyone deserves to be safe and people should be able to spend their money as they wish. You know, if they feel like in the neighborhood here that they have had too much crime for their liking um, and they want to spend their money however much of it it is and whatever they want to do to improve their neighborhood for their families i don't i don't see how that could be disturbing ben chamiso newsy chicago